So any questions, first of all, uh, about anything from previous classes? No? No. no. Pardon me? OK. <laughs> What if I do that in an example today? I'm going to have some classes created to, the, to create it. When we got to it, tell me, and I'll do whatever you are telling me for, for that, because we're going to have a one argument constructor today. Doesn't matter, 50 arguments. So, so How can you set a variable to two values? Okay, well, it's going to come to this. So, so the class that I'm going to create, today I'm going to create a, a base class. So I'm going to use a name, okay? So I'm going to create a dynamic name. Then I'm going to inherit it into a full name. I'm going to say full name is a name that has a last name. So I'm going to inherit that one. They both will have dynamic memory allocation, and we're going to actually do, uh, uh, what shall we call it? We're going to do... Um, uh, rule of three to make sure that the class has been treated. So uh, then I'm going to explain to you, um, and you ask question about it, and I'll and, and we'll go through it. Okay. All right. So first, um, I have the utils over here. So the very first thing that I'm going to do over here, I'm going to add a class, and that class will be called name. So. I will create a dynamic name. Its job is to actually create a name, to have a name. So the name class of mine, I have my cheat sheet over here. Everything's written, so I'm not going to type too much. I'm just going to bring them in. <clears throat> so essentially, this is going to be the name header file, OK? And obviously, the name that we are going to create, I am going to make it uh, uh, printable with uh, uh, I stream and O stream, and again, you are you are working on your milestone three now. On your miles milestone three, when you are creating read writable class, I ask you over there to overload I O stream. So the I O uh, overload insertion and extraction operator. So insertion and extraction operators that you are creating are identical to what you see over here, and many examples we have done before. Okay, <coughs> so. <coughs> Um, the name that we're going to have, we're going to say name has a value. So I'm going to have a character pointer over here, value. And I'm going to make sure that value is, is empty in any scenario that the, the name is getting created. So when you have such a thing, let me see if it's actually visible over there. Yeah. Uh, I don't bite. You guys can come closer if you can see if it's too dim. You can, <laughs> you can, come, you, you can come closer over here to the screen to see it, because I cannot turn off the slide, so uh, uh, it's, uh, it's sadly a little dim. So Because everybody's like sitting at the back as if I'm going to fist fight. I'm not going to do anything. So I'm very harmless. Oh, no, 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 that's done. It's gone. <laughs> Believe me, nobody's safer than me. I am like. Any vaccination out there about anything, I've done it. So four doses and uh, flu vaccine and uh, Omicron, you name it, I have it. I know. Just uh, but, um, the only place that I could have gotten it is here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so don't worry. You are closer to that lady and that gentleman than mine. And those are people who gave it to me. So. So anyways, but joking aside, um, if you can't see, please come close. Anyways, so as you see, I'm initializing the value of the property of the name. Um, that's a very good practice, because when you make it like that, no matter what type of constructor you have, before, before the constructor comes to action to prepare your object for existence, 
those things come to effect and clear everything. So you don't have to worry about in different versions two argument constructor, one argument constructor, copy constructor, what type of constructor you have. Oh, I should make things null or make sure make it. it's always better to initialize your stuff over there if you can, if it is good and to, to have it in part of your uh, 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 code. Okay? So <clears throat> now uh, the next thing I want to do over here is uh, make sure my name can provide the value of the name to its children because I am looking forward to inherit this into a full name. So I'm going to have a protected method created over here, constant character pointer. I'm going to call it we get me a name value, name value, <coughs> const, which returns that name to the children. Okay, so if children needs to have act, need to have access to value, that's how they do it. That's how they get it. So again, protected means children have access, but outsiders don't. Protected means children have access, but outsiders don't. <coughs> Then, obviously, I'm going to create constructors and all the good stuff that I have. So I'm going to have a constructor for the name that receives the value for the name. And uh, it makes sure that if it's not so, that's my uh, default constructor right off the bat. I'm making not a value null PTR, which means if they don't provide anything, my name's going to be empty. Sets the name in, a, in an empty state. I'm going to set it up when the time comes. Then I'm going to apply rule of three over here to make sure everything's good. Rule of three. And for rule of three, what do I have? I have the copy constructor that accepts a constant reference of the same object. And then I'm going to have a copy assignment that always returns the reference of the current object, receiving a constant reference of the current object. OK? And obviously, at the end, I am going to create a destructor to make sure that nothing's wrong with this. What is my mistake down to this point? Pardon me? Where? Tilda. Oh, yeah, tilde. Oh, yeah. No, that's not my mistake. That's a typo. Virtual, yes. I said at any moment, at any moment of time, I said from now on, any destructor you create, you should assume that a destructor's signature always need a virtual in front of it, no matter what. Always, always, always make your destructor virtual. I would say even like at this, at, with this level of knowledge, Always make it virtual. When you are expert in C++, there may come a time that you would prefer it not to have, not to be virtual. But that's um, highly unlikely. Okay. So in any case, I, I, I literally say to you, today, to the time you die, you do this. Okay, that's what I would say. So then I need to be able to display the thing. So to display, we know that I have to actually. Uh, 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 a bad way is to make these two friends of the thing, which I don't want to. And also, that doesn't apply virtuality. I want to display the name and make those display and read updatable for future uses. So what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to actually create std stream reference display to display the name. And you see how many times I have given you this example of how to write a display and it's always the same, no surprises, and you can actually use this for all the things that you are doing. It is very, very, very standard way of doing it. So that's the display that I'm doing to make sure it's updatable. The latest version is always called is for me to make it virtual. Okay. And I'll do the exact same thing for read. So read works the exact same way, but the only difference is that read uh, uh, works with iStream. 
And this is my name. This is the name that I'm creating. It holds a value. And uh, I can set the value. I can copy and assign it. Uh, destroy it if I want to. Display it or read it. And all the good stuff that I have. Okay? So let's implement the name to see how it works. Um, so name.cpp. Why do I need that? Anyways. So, oh, and I forgot something extremely, no, no. Yeah, I forgot something extremely important, namespace, SDDS. <clears throat> okay, so I want to create, I want to uh, do the uh, uh, functions for the name. Uh, the very first thing I need to do over here is uh, uh, returning the name. So to return the name, I would simply say name value returns the M value, and it gives a safe and secure way to access the data of the name without being able to change it. So it is constant. It doesn't change the name, and it returns a constant pointer version of the name. Therefore, it's a read-only version of the value. Now, in the utilities over here, I have a pretty cool function. Allocate and copy. So I have created a function that receives a value, allocates enough space for it, and copies into it and returns it. If you look at allocate and copy in here, that's how it does. Where is it? Allocate and copy. There you go. So first I'll create a new string. Then if C string is not null, I'm going to say allocate to the size of that, okay, and uh, return the value. Do I have? Yeah. And, uh, and copy it and return the value. Are we okay with this? All right. So I don't have to do the allocation and copying over and over and over. So using that, <clears throat> creating my, uh, my name will be very, very, very simple. So my, uh, my, my constructor, I, don't, I, I simply reuse that value, and my constructor is going to look like something like this. So I'm going to say, uh, oh, and I have to include utils. And because I include utils, it's going to instantiate uh, the UT for me. Uh, it's going to give me access to UT, UT, uh, UT for me over here. And I have an external Boolean SDDS debug that I can activate if I want to look at this stuff happening. <clears throat> also, that UT is instantiated in utils.cpp up here, so I can actually use my utils. Therefore, in name.cpp over here, I am saying uh, uh, if the value is not null, allocate and copy from the utility and put it in the value. <clears throat> uh, And if it is null, allocate and copy an empty string. So even if it's null, I'm not going to set my uh, name to a null pointer. So I made it easy not to have uh, 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 safe empty state. So my safe empty state is an empty string, not a null pointer. What is the difference between empty string and a null pointer? What is the difference between an empty string and a null pointer? An empty string, an empty string, Let's see if I can do this. Will it work or not? Okay, not me. I want that. There we go. Kind of corner of the thing is, is, is visible now. Good. So now I'm saying the empty string face masks are required. <laughs> That's from old times. It's not <laughs> so, so, 
So, uh, all right. So, uh, uh, what do we do over here? So, an empty, a, a null pointer is this. So, you have the nine null pointer. This is value. Okay. But value. So, this is value PTR, whatever pointer is. A null pointer doesn't point to anywhere. Okay. This is a character pointer. That's a null pointer. So, that's ha having a null pointer. Having an empty string is having the value pointer, whatever it is, pointing to a single character that is null. Okay? So this is a single character. Turn off your cell phones. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's that. So, so instead of, instead of val PTR to pointing to a uh, an array of stuff, it points to an array with one element that is null. So it is actually pointing to something which is empty. Okay? It's like not having coffee or having a cup of coffee that is empty. They're two different things. So there is a cup, but it's empty. So that's the second one. Okay? So that's how I uh, do my uh, uh, thing over there. What is that? That. Uh, uh, name thingy over there. So that's how my name is working over there. That's how I take care of the empty state. If, if this is null, it's not going to set it to null. It's going to set it to an empty string. And obviously, I want to show the that stuff that I have uh, um, um, on um, uh, on screen, and I'm using C log for that. So uh, C out is not the only thing that you have. You have C out. C error, C E R R, and C log. These are three things that can print on a string. The difference is that if your C out fails and doesn't print anything on a screen anymore, so your C log and C error will still do. So you can you have three different objects to print on a string. C log is one of those. That STDS debug over there is redundant. I wouldn't have done that. So uh, we what we could do over here is uh, actually setting the C log. To, an, uh, to a fail state, and it won't print anymore. But we'll see that later. Anyways, so in here, I'm going to say include <coughs> IO stream for that C log and using namespace SDDS. <coughs> okay, so, oh, STD. Thank you. Okay, so that, great. So if, and, SDS debug is valid too. So if the debug goes on, then I'm going to actually show the, the messages that are getting printed so I can see how my name is going to actually work. Are we good down to this point? So we're going to speed up. We've done all these things before, so I'm going to go through it. The assignment operator, copy assignment operator that we have done, I'm just going to put it right over here. The copy assignment operator, how does it work? It receives a reference to the right side. First, it does a self-check to make sure it's not copying itself by mistake. And then it deletes the current value that it has and then replaces it with the value of the right side. I do not need to check to see if anything is null in here because in my constructor, I set it in a way that I will never have null in my data. My data will either point to a valid string or it's going to point to an empty string. There will be a string, so the pointer is never null. Therefore, my assignment operator doesn't need to check to see if actually this value over here is null or not. This value will always contain something. And even if it doesn't, the allocation and copy will take care of that. So we're good. Are we OK with uh, the assignment operator? Copy, copy, copy assignment. I should bring that thing up in a thing and you say yes. OK? <laughs> Do a poll. <laughs> yeah, go. I am in namespace STDS. This is developed in name. I know it's dim. You cannot see it properly. I am in this namespace STDS. I instantiated utils in UT. So what I did over here in utils.cpp, I created an instance of utils called UT. Okay? And I expose that one to whoever includes utils.h in here using extern. Therefore, anybody including utils 
can use the object ut. That ut dot helps the next person who is looking at my code know that when I say str copy, it's not from string header file because I'm going to say ut dot str copy. I am in namespace SDBS. When I am inside the namespace, a namespace SDDS, you are in this class. I don't have to tell you that you're in this class. I don't have to say, we are in OP244, and then you are already in the class, right? You are in this namespace, so you know where you are. OK. okay. Strange question, but OK. <laughs> All right? All right. So we're good with assignment operator, right? And whenever you create the assignment operator, create the copy constructor as a breeze because, because uh, the, you just call the assignment operator. And usually, calling the assignment operator, you need to make sure, because assi assignment operator is designed to work, to override an existing assignment. Assignment operator is used to override an existing object. Whereas copy constructor c creates a brand new object out of an existing one. I lost everyone, didn't I? No? We're good? Are we good? So again, assignment operator, it means I have an object, and I have another object that I want to copy. I get the content of that one, I wipe the one that I have over here, and copy everything over. That's assignment operator. With copy constructor, I have an object, and I create a brand new one out of that one. I don't need to make anything null because, or wipe anything off, OK? Now, in this, cons this constructor, because you are creating, you are calling the assignment operator, assignment operator is under the impression that the object already exists, so it deletes the memory of the object, you see? So if I did not do this, if I haven't done this in my name, which is initializing the m value to null, then you had to do it manually in the uh, constructor. Other, otherwise, it would have failed when you are calling the assignment operator because there is garbage in a pointer. It tries to delete a pointer that is garbage, and it fails. So that's why it's always good to have a clean object to start with and have all the things to set to, uh, to safe empty states. OK, I'm going to say no need, no need to uh, set m value to null since it is already initialized. Initialized. OK? So that's our copy, copy, copy constructor. We have no problem with that, too. <clears throat> the destructor is a breeze. The destructor is a breeze. Uh, all I'm doing is deleting what I have. Many of students, and I, like, I, I, I always said in my class, whenever you are deleting something and you're making sure, you make sure um, uh, to make sure that that is not afterwards, so if it's reused, you're not going to have any trouble. I keep telling that to all my students, okay? But as a professional, like, as you are getting better, don't make it null in a destructor afterwards. Don't. Don't do this. Because you are creating the procedure who's overseeing the destruction of an object. The destruction of an object. Who cares that the null pointer is null when you are throwing it in garbage? Right? It's like you're washing a disposable dish and then throw it in garbage. You don't do that usually. Although it's good for recycling, but what I'm saying is that you don't do that. Like, it, like you, you get a coffee cup, Tim Hortons, and you drink it. Have you ever washed it before throwing it in garbage? No. So if you are supposed to reuse the pointer, you set it to no. If you are 100% sure that the, the pointer is not supposed to be used, don't make it null afterwards. It just shows that you're a rookie. OK? You give that code to a person as your C++ sample code to get hired, they're going to say, this person has no idea what dynamic memory allocation is. 
because it's like setting something that is dying to null. So now that you are better at it, think before you do it. So if you are deleting halfway your program, yeah, sure, of course, set it to null. But if you are not, you're at the end, don't do it. OK. Display, breezy. No, no problem. I'm just displaying the name. So I'm just going to say display is constant, and I'm going to display the m value. And because m value doesn't have an empty state, it's either an empty, either an empty string or uh, a string filled with values, it doesn't matter. If it's empty, nothing's printed. If there is something, something's printed. So we are good. We don't have to do anything. <clears throat> are we OK down to this point? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? So, OK. Next, reading. For reading, I'm using my beautiful tool over there to get something dynamically from the thing, but from the string. But, <clears throat> but uh, it would be nice if I actually, like, I know what I've done. It. So get dynamic string from iStream. What it does, it actually receives, uh, uh, you, it, it uses the thing that you have in the notes. It uses, let me just, all right, so, uh, so yeah, so I have get dynamic string in utils, okay, and what that does, it, it's using the string, so <clears throat> uh, I'm using the string uh, object of, uh, of, uh, you know what, I'm going to do something else, give me a second. So let me first explain this one. This is in your notes and it's part of the optional thing. So the only time you are allowed to use the string object is here and nowhere else. Okay? So use the string object. So you create a string object. The string object is a class designed to handle C strings with no problem. So you don't have to work. It makes it like a variable. We created a string together here. Remember that? It's that. Okay? So the get line for a string is not object-oriented. It's a helper function because they couldn't put it inside the string, so they created the helper function called get line. This get line is not member of iStream. It's a standalone function. As its argument, it receives I, iStream and receives the string it's supposed to put the stuff in and a delimiter. It acts ex exactly like get line with C strings, but it puts it inside a string. The good thing is that with this get line, you don't need to mention size. Because it's dealing with string, it's going to expand as it goes automatically. So it automatically makes it bigger as it goes. After you have done it, <clears throat> you have to check, did it fail? Which means they put 5 billion characters and it failed. It's, it's something like that. OK, it's not going to fail. But if it didn't fail, then you say you, you get the string and ask the string to give you C string version of itself. So this is like get name value that receives the constant character pointer. This returns a constant character pointer of the string, of the C string inside the C++ string. I get that one, I allocate, allocate and copy, put it in C string and return it. So this will receive a dynamic C string free of size. They can enter any size on the keyboard they want, and it will receive it, and it will get it to you. So you don't need to say maximum of 60 characters, maximum of 50 characters. You don't need to say that. It gives it to you as, <clears throat> as long as you want. But I'm going to do something here now. Just a second. When in 2017 it was? When in 2017 it was, remember? Eleven, right? Yes, got it. Okay, so so what I'm gonna do, I have another one created that does that one manually. Copy. <clears throat> so I'm gonna create the second one over here, 
I'm just going to add it over here. I'm going to say character pointer or let me see. Because I, I want everybody to go and try to try and walk through what I have written a long time ago. So copy. So this is get dynamic C string utils. Okay. And it's going to need an allocation unit that I'm going to add at the top over here. And I'm going to make it say 128. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm going to add this one to your utils.h over here. So let me actually call it exactly like the other one, C string, and this one receives a constant character pointer prompt. So I just overloaded that one. That receives using I stream. This receives only from C in. Okay. So this get dynamic C string over here receives only from C in. So <clears throat> I want you to go through it. So it does exactly. So this get dynamic C string over here, this get dynamic C string over here does what this one is doing. Okay, so it essentially uh, um, gets, try to walk through it and understand how it works. I'm not going to teach it. Okay, it's a challenge for you. Walk through it and see how it works. Okay, as easy as that. Um, um, it's as, as something, to, uh, yeah, and you can, al you can always uh, put an I stream over here and change all the C ins here to ISDR and remove that one completely, okay? Your choice. I put it over there, your choice to, to use it or not, okay? So this one, this get dynamic string, what it does that I have written, it gets a basic size, say, say so it allocates, the, in this case, 128 characters and tries to read in that one. If it's not enough, it resizes it automatically and continues reading. And it resizes and keeps reading and over and over until the data entry is done and then returns it. So it's not using any uh, uh, C++ strings. It's written purely uh, from scratch. So take a look at it and use it if you want to. <clears throat> anyway, so back to name. So read gets the dynamic string from iStream and returns it. And that's the read that we have. And obviously, that, like the... Uh, the, uh, the normal, like, like standard way of overloading the uh, insertion and extraction operator are these. It's wrong to say overloading insertion and extraction. So let's correct that one now that we are at this stage so you know. <clears throat> what is this one, insertion or extraction? This is insertion operator, right? So insertion operator is an overloaded operator of left shift operator. So this is called left shift. So what, what we call insertion operator is actually something called left shift operator that works with bits inside an integer. We have no idea what it is. Three, four, five, you're going to find that at the end of the semester in three, four, five. Okay, now, now. But uh, just, just know that this is left shift. This is right shift. So when we say overload insertion operator, correct terminology is like, Overload left shift operator to print the object. Overload right shift operator to print the object. But we they call it insertion and extraction because they did it with that with C in and C out and it became standard in C++. So uh, the insertion operator is an overload of left shift operator. But anyways, my name is done and this is all, all about it. So now <clears throat> I have the name, let me compile it and uh, see if, it's, uh, if it works or not. So I'm going to go rebuild this thing to see if it actually compiles. <clears throat> I got some redefinition of the... F oh, what did I do? Oh, I put it in here? God, where? 
Sorry. That's in it. See, it, you don't put the fault value in C. C. You only put it in, a, in the prototype, right? I put it in both places. I'm a bad boy. Fix it now. Uh, there we go. So that's the name. Now, this we have done already in like what the third week, fourth week of the of the semester. We did dynamic memory allocation, or second, third week. I don't know. This is dynamic memory allocation. Some constructors and 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 copy constructors and rule of three. But what we can what we are concerned about is that what if what if I have a class inherited from this one that has dynamic memory of its own. Then how am I supposed to handle rule of three? Okay? That's, so it means when I have inheritance and dynamic memory allocation, inheritance and resource in my object, how do I handle it? So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to actually create a class called full name. So I'm going to create a class called full name. This class full name of mine, full name, inherits from name. The base class is name, and it's public, as we see. So now I'm going to say click OK. I have to do some fixing, I know, but, but we'll see. So as you see over here, it says public class name and yada, yada, yada. But it, doesn't put all the good things that it's supposed to do, like the namespace STDS and all those good stuff. So, so I'm going to overwrite that with my cheat sheet over here. <coughs> so this is the class. Full name. Pardon me? Oh, give me a second. I'm just doing this. I'm going to put... There we go. Oh. I think they're good now. So that's my full name class. That is a name. So I'm going to say full name is a name that has a last name. Right? So a name by itself is name. Fred, Jack, Fardat, whatever. Okay? And a full name has a name is a name that has a last name added to with your name with the name now we could go for middle name and stuff i'm not going to do that okay <clears throat> so so my full name has all the stuff that name has but it's going to add one more thing to it that is the last name so i'm going to add the last name over here and that becomes my full name okay now full name of mine obviously it needs to if you want to only call somebody by their last name, then you need to get a name that is only last name or a name that is only first name, right? So I can do some, add some cool stuff to this, um, but, um, like this. So I can actually create a couple of uh, functions and I say, if you say full name first, it's going to return a name that only has first name in it. If you have, if you say last, you're going to return a name that is only last name in it. So you can actually do that. So if you want to only get the last, last name or first name, that's what we're going to do. Then I'm going to need to have a constructor. Obviously, a constructor of, uh, of uh, a name needs to get the first name and the last name. Two things. It's not only one. So let me make it bigger so we can actually see. I think it's better like this. So the constructor of full name gets the first name and the last name to build a name for you. OK? Are we getting there? Go ahead. Pardon me? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me take, this, these two became confusing. Let me remove it. That's, I'm going to put that later. Let's think about it like this. A name is something you refer someone with. Now, some people call me like Mr. Soliman. They do that, right? My name, who's, what is his name? His, his name is Mr. Soliman, right? And other people say, he's for that. 
correct? So still that's the name. That is only a last name. So you can refer to someone's name. Name can be a last name, can be a first name, but a full name has a name, first name, and a last name. Okay? That's why you can extract somebody's last name with a name that only has full name in it. Or extract somebody's first name in a name that only has first name in it. But I don't put it over here. So forget about it. It became confusing. That wasn't the point that I wanted to make. My point over here is uh, rule of three for classes with resources, for uh, inherited classes with resources. We'll deal with that later. Obviously, I'm going to need to have a constructor and a destructor. Uh, rule of three. I, after the, uh, the constructor, I'm going to have rule of three applied. And rule of three needs the constructor, <coughs> destructor, and the uh, copy assignment. So do I need to write virtual behind full name? The answer is no. Virtuality is transitive. What does it mean transitive? It means if you have a function or anything that is virtual, the next one is virtual, and after that is virtual, you don't need to write virtual. This is now a virtual destructor, if you want it or not. Because the virtuals, because the destructor of its parent is virtual, it kind of infect infects this one with virtualism too. So if I have a grandchild over here after this, with another function, another destructor, that would have been virtual too, and it keeps going like that. And that's the same thing with functions. <clears throat> so if you write a virtual over here, you're a good person. You just want to uh, uh, make sure there is, no, there is no confusion. So you're just going to tell them, you don't need to look at the parent. It's virtual. Okay? But if you don't write it, it's still virtual. It is implied. Because the parent is virtual, the destructor of the... Uh, uh, of the derived class, child class, is virtual. Obviously, I want to overwrite the display and read. So always, the, uh, so uh, <coughs> um, overwrite the virtual functions, display and read. Again, I don't need to mention these are virtual because display of the parent with the exact same signature is virtual. This will become virtual too. But to be nice, it won't hurt for me to write it over here for people to know. Right. Pardon me? <laughs> no, you're going to have a good career. So, <laughs> yes. Three, four, five. <laughs> we have override. We have default. You can set it to yeah. Well. Is it, is it like <clears throat> you're, you're enforcing it. You're making sure that this is, is an override. <clears throat> yeah. If if they have same signature, it overrides. Okay. <clears throat> That's three, four, five. Okay. Sorry, because answering those questions, you can answer it after the, ask after them. Okay. <clears throat> Do I need to overload uh, the insertion and extraction operators? People, do I need to overload the uh, insertion and extraction operators for this? <clears throat> do I? No, I don't. Because full name is a name. Because it is a name, and the name is already overloaded for insertion and extraction. Because of that fact, uh, anything that I overloaded for name will be uh, working for this one too. All right, so that's that. And this is now time for a break. All right, <clears throat> so. Let's do the full name. So I have the full name written, and I want to create the functions one by one. So the very first thing I'm going to do is listen to what the teacher is about to say. Then I am going to, there we go. <clears throat> so for the constructor of the 
full name. So let's create the constructor over here. I'm going to create the constructor. Uh, do I have SDS over here? No. Namespace SDDS. Probably I'm going to need IO stream and using namespace std. Let's start. So I'm going to create the full name, full names constructor. So the very first thing I need to do in the constructor of the full name, is it readable over there? Can you see it? Yeah. The first thing I need to do over here is to make sure that the parent part is built properly. That's my first goal. When I have a full name, the first name should go to my mother. That is name. Right? So I have to pass this one to name. How do I initialize parts of full name, which one of them is name? in the initialization area. So in here, I am going to say, hey, please pass the first name over there to name. So I'm going to say name first. <clears throat> that constructs the name before the full name is being made. Initializes the name with first name before it's made. made. Then after doing this, what do I do? I'm going to say M last name is equal to ut dot, because I do not have it, let me add it over here, include utils. So I'm going to say last name is equals to ut dot <coughs> allocate and copy of last, right? Obviously, I'm going to add uh, that debug thingy so I can actually show. Okay, so that's my full name constructor. I call, I calling the constructor is wrong. I initialize the parent using the name. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? <clears throat> now, the exact same thing happens with copy constructors. So when you are doing, that's what classes with resources are. So when you are actually dealing with the copy constructor, <clears throat> what you need to do, so let's bring the copy constructor over here. And there are many different ways of doing it. All you need to do is to make sure that the, ch the parent part is taken care of. If I am copying, if I am copying, the, d making the copy constructor, how can I actually deal with it? How can I actually do it? There are two ways, okay? <clears throat> One way is to say, create the name, okay, using, uh, what was the thing that returned the name? And, uh, name value, something like that, right? So I can say, build the name using the name value function of the current object. Okay, of not that current object, sorry, the one that I'm good to. So it's fn.name value. Okay, so I'm saying build the name, build the name that is the child, that the parent name with the first name of full name. So this is going to get the name value, build the name out of it, and then the rest I'll do the copy. Okay, and, and I'll do the copying for the rest uh, um, exactly as I've done with the other one. So I can actually say over here, uh, and last name is ut.allocopy with fn dot last name. So it gets that one and copies it. This will create the name. This will create the last name. But this is not a good way of doing it. You know what I can do? I can simply put the whole full name over here. Why? Because full name is a name. When you are saying copy, when you are passing the full name to name, because name is receiving a reference of name for copy constructor, the full name will behave like a child over there. So when the copy, when FN, FN is passed to name, name will only copy the name part of it. Okay? It's as if you have a small cup of Tim Hortons and a large cup of, of Tim Hortons. You can always put the large one inside the small one, right? It covers only that much of it. 
So a cup that is small can contain the small part of a large cup. The rest will not be copied. It will, be, it will overflow. Right? It's the same thing over here. A full name can be looked at as a name because it's his child. Therefore, the copy constructor of name will copy only the name over there and mission is accomplished. As I told you, there are many different ways of doing it. This is one of them. Okay? I can write five different versions for it. But the whole idea is that when you are creating the copy constructor for a child class, you have to make sure that the parent class is copied properly any way you can. And I'll give you several different versions of it, as you will see. For the assignment operator, it is the same. So what I will do for the assignment operator is this. Just take a look. Again, you have to make sure that you take care of the child parent part. So what I'm doing for the assignment operator of the full name, I'm doing the usual things. Am I copying myself? No. And that's the log. But all I need to do is to say name operator equal, and I pass the reference of the parent. Because the parent can be looked at as a child, it will only as copy assign the name part of the full name. And then the rest I will do by myself. So as you see, I'm just taking care of it over here. Or <clears throat> you can do it another way too. Or you can, you will see people do this too. Uh, no, 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 no. Forget about it. Forget about it. No, no, no. Um, I have to cast it. I don't want to do it. Forget about it. This is better. OK? I don't want to confuse you. So you're, you're calling the assignment operator of the parent, passing that one. Then you delete the last name and overwrite it, and you're done. Yes? The good thing is that I made it easy. If I had an empty state, yes. I don't. The way I designed it, it is impossible for them to be empty. If it's empty, it's just going to be a, a, an empty string. So nothing's going to get printed. So you can have a full name that has a first name and last name is empty. It still works. But of course, again, everything has to be taken care of. If you have an empty state, yes, all those things has to be checked. And you have to follow all those procedures to do what you need to do. OK? Now, for example, now, now that I have this assignment operator, for the copy constructor, all I needed to do, I, I could actually do this too. Just take a look. So this was one version of copy constructor that I did. So I'm going to put the bad one over here too. So this one was fn dot name value. So this builds it. So this one builds the base using one argument constructor, correct? Which we don't want to use it, correct? This one uses, so builds the base using copy constructor of base and it will copy only the name part of full name. The rest must be done by you. Right? I can even do this. Take a look. I can simply say, <clears throat> let me comment this uh, for now, for a second, and I'm going to bring it back. The top one is a, is, a good, is a one that I prefer, but I can say full name, full name, const, full name, reference fn, and I just don't put anything in there. So. Constant. Oh, full name, yeah. OK, so I can do it like this. When you don't write anything, what's going to happen to base? 
it's going to be defaulted, right? So name will be empty, correct? Name will be empty. So what I can do over here is this. Take a look. So this will make the name empty and then cause the assignment operator, correct? Assignment operator comes over here and assigns the name part to that one. So that empty name will be overwritten by the name of the full name. And then the rest will happen. One, two, three. Three different ways to copy. Right? Any way you want. It all works. So again, think of what, what you want. This, I like the second one better because it reuse, reuses the copy constructor, so everything is copying, but all of them work. This uses single argument constructor, this uses copy constructor, this uses default constructor of the base, and then overwrites it with assignment. So, so this one builds the base using default constructor and then overwrites it with operator equal. Okay? They are all correct and they, are, they will all work perfectly. I personally like this one better. Why? I have no idea. There is no preference. They all work perfectly. They are all efficient. This, actually, no, this is, not, th this is not efficient. This is the slowest one because it first builds the name, then deletes the value of the name and overwrites it again. So an extra step is done for no reason. Okay? These two are perfectly good because they both construct the name from scratch. First one and second one are better. So second one is the one that I'm going to leave, and I like it better like that. And let's put the debugging thingy over there so you can actually see how it happens. Okay. So that's assignment operator. Uh, did I do the destructor? I didn't do the destructor, right? So the destructor you don't need to do anything because the destructor is virtual you just write the destructor for full name for its own because the base is virtual everything happens in reverse first it deletes the, the child then it deletes the base so everything's good so you don't need to do anything it works perfectly the display overrides the display of the of the parent using the parents display to whatever display whatever it wants so it says display get the o stream first display the parent part okay then if last name exist which means the first one is not null if i have anything add a space and print the last name if the last name is empty it's not going to print anything so that's printing the last name and for print for getting the uh full name i'm actually going to prompt the user to get the value that's not it's not a good idea to actually prompt the user because then you cannot read it from a file or a comma separated value or something but anyways i did it this way so i'm saying print the first name then i call the read of name so read of name gets the name for the first name then i'm going to say last name i delete the last name and get dynamically uh the the last name for the for the user and i'm done so that's that. So as you see now, when I actually test this, I'll walk through it so we'll see exactly what happens. So <clears throat> did I? So I have the full name and I have all the good stuff that I have over here. Say hello. I'm going to remove this and make this. Oh, I have name first. Hello, name. I remove that name thingy that I've written that I was confusing. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm just going to put it like this. So that say hello receives a name by, uh, by value, and, and, uh, and uh, we'll see how it gets copied, OK? So now if I run the program, and in here I have the debug set to true. Um, so I'm going to run it and, and walk through it so we'll see exactly how it works. All right, put that one at left, put this one at right. So <clears throat> the main starts creating a, a full name by default. So it comes in full name. And when it's by default, this is what we have. So it receives first name and last name as null PTR because we mentioned if there is nothing, make them null. And that's exactly what it's going to do. But first, it's got to pass that null to the name. So it goes to the name. Name will receive a null and makes it null. Will receive a null. And because it's null, it makes an empty name. Obviously, it's actually showing a, a message over here that C got created. Let me bring this over here so we can actually see. There we go. So it actually says C and shows this, which means nothing got created because it's empty. So the name is created. Then full name gets created, makes the last name null. And because there is nothing in there, the allocate and copy will do the same. So it's not going to copy anything. It's just going to return the null back. <coughs> so last name over here will become null which I did not intend to do. I wanted to actually make it uh, like the other one. So let's actually make it like the other one. Am I? Did I do that? Let me just see. When did I do that in name? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So we'll, we'll fix it later. So it actually makes the name null. That's going to actually make it crash. Let me see. What did I do with name? Yeah, so we have to do it exactly like this one. So I'm going to do it the same way. <coughs> So for full name, instead of doing allo copy, I'm going to say uh, last, uh, if it's null, so I'm going to say uh, m last name will be equal to allo copy, ut dot allo copy. And in here, I'm going to say last. So if last is not null, last is passed. If it is, then an empty string is passed. OK? Does that make sense? All the silence. Does that make sense? Or should I write the if statement? Should I write the if statement? Let me write the if statement. So this says, if this is null, return an empty string. So it's going to allocate and copy an empty string. If it is not null, return the last, which means it's going to copy the last. No? I understand this line, but I don't know why you have to rewrite it. Why do I have to rewrite it? The, the way it was to put a null, because I wanted to make my full name, like my name, not to have an empty state where uh, the, uh, where the data is pointing to null. I want it to point to something, but be empty. So now let's see if it works. So, so I'm going to put a stop sign over here and run it one more time to come to that point. So it actually comes over here. Now when it actually goes to alloc allocate and copy, hopefully that C string, let me see, that C string is actually something. It's an empty string, as you see. It's not null anymore. So it's going to actually come over here and create one character and copy one character into it. Therefore, I'm going to have an empty string over here instead of having a null. So sorry, SDR copy. So now, as you see, this has an empty string. So it's not empty. It's not null. It's an empty string. And it's going to say FC null, and it comes out. Now it's going to say, what is your name? It's going to get 
go to CN. CN is the overloaded for the name, but because what is passed over there is full name, it goes to the latest version of read, which is the read of the full name, not the name. So it comes to full names read, prints first name, and then tells to, re to, to read of name to read the name, and that's going to say over here, I'm going to say over here, Fred, and I hit enter. Then it's going to say last name. Did I hit it? Oh, last name. Is it receiving something that I missed? Did I press F5 by mistake? Let me see. Yes, I did. Darn it. <laughs> Um, I pressed F5 by mistake, so it compiled everything and ran everything. So I'm going to go one more time right down to here. So uh, we don't want that. Continue. There we go. So now it's going to be over here, Fred. Oh, at first I have to execute that. It's going to be Fred, enter. So it comes over here. Now it prints last name, deletes the last name that was empty. That single character will be deleted, and a dynamic one will be received over here. And I'm going to put Soleil and I hit enter. So now I have the full name as, as Fred Soleil over here. And it comes, and now it wants to pass that by value to full name. So it goes to the copy constructor, passes the F name to the copy constructor of name. This has Fred, this has, uh, let me just go into it first. So this CP over here, as you see, it, is, it only shows Soleil over here because that's the last name. Then it comes over here and says, copy the operator. But, so it comes to name over here. It will actually copy the M value over here. Copy, it's going to say nothing. What's going on here? Let me see. Oh, did, oh, it's overwriting it, so it's nothing, and now it's going to allocate and copy the first part of the full name over here, that is Fred into M value, and uh, um, I should have made the, uh, the, the message, the log over there better, I'll do it, but anyway, so now the name part is copied, now it comes then to over here, and uh, continues with the rest, which is copying the, the last name, and therefore it is copied and goes over here and it says, Hello, Fred Soleil. Now we are at the end of Say Hello. It's going to destruct that name in here because it's a copy. So it goes to the destructor of the names. It says, Destroy, de Destroying uh, Fred Soleil. First, it deletes the name, the last name, and now it goes to name. Now it says, the Fred part is getting deleted, and then it goes out. And now the N over here will get deleted, which is the same story. Okay? And the program ends. And we can do it, test it with the assignment operator, do it at home, go through it and see how it works. But let me make that uh, uh, log thingy over there more understandable. So I'm going to go in this log thingy in here that I had. Give me a second, give me a second. I'm not going anywhere. Give me a second. So in here, I'm going to say yada yada um, f operator this. Okay, so this is what it had, this is what it's going to have. So, so I'm going to remove I'm going to remove this new line over here. So it's going to show what it was and what it's going to be. So it shows what, what it overwrites. Uh, and the reason it was saying nothing over there was that uh, because uh, uh, the assignment operator was called in the uh, in the uh, copy construction, and there was nothing to print. Okay? All right. Go ahead. You're talking about statically allocated and dynamically allocated. It's not, there are two different things. Static 
and non-static, static and automatic variables, completely different meaning with statically allocated and dynamically allocated. This is statically allocated. This is dynamically allocated. Okay, statically allocated means it's not dynamic. So that's the confusion. It's not static type, and it's a statically allocated type and dynamic type. Statics, again, three, four, five. Static variables are variables who keep their value after their scope is gone. So their lifetime is global, but their, their scope is not. Does that make sense? A static variable's lifetime is global, but scope is not. So if you create a static variable inside a function, when it called the first time, second time you go to it, it keeps the old value. It remains, it won't die. They are sticky. <laughs> they don't go away. That's a different story. That's OP345. Okay. okay. And I don't think it's in notes they talk about it. And if they do, we have to remove it immediately. <laughs> I don't think they do. I think if you're saying static and dynamic, then it's statically allocated. They should mention statically allocated memory. Okay? All right. Anything else? Yes. Deleted. Yeah, okay. When your object by nature is unique. Um, mm, I don't know if in the project did I, this is menu. There was one in, um, menu is deleted, right? Is menu deleted? I don't remember, but in workshop eight, it's, uh, so, so what happened? So let's put it this way. Let me just put it this way. Um, Let's say you want to create Let's say I want to create um, a class representing a file on the hard disk. Okay? And that's my data file that I want to access. Okay? Now, when you instantiate that it gives you an object that does what you want to do, correct? What happens if that gets copied? Like if you pass it by value, it gets copied, right? Then you're going to have two objects pointing to the same file. What do you want to do? Write a copy constructor? The copy constructor, it means you have to copy the file on a hard drive. They are both, and then when it updates, what happens? The file, you see, it becomes confusing because it is not supposed to happen. When you are dealing with a hard, like if your file on a hard drive is supposed to remain unique and you want to create a, an object called data file that is supposed to only look at the data file in the file and it shouldn't get copied, then you have to make the constructor and assignment operator deleted to make sure anybody using your object doesn't copy it by mistake. They have to pass it by reference or pointer. They cannot pass it by value or return it by value. So you enforce the logic of uniqueness for your object to your application. Does that make sense? All right. Anything else? So applying rule of three, when I say apply the rule of three over here, usually we, it has an extension. Apply the U rule of three so the object doesn't get copied or or assign, or apply rule of three so it's copied safely, but it's not assigned. 
or apply the rule of three, or it is assigned but not copied, depending on what you want to do. That rarely happens. I don't know why you wanted something to get assigned but not copied, or vice versa. But usually, it's either delete them both or implement them both so they are copied safely. OK? So anyway, so all I want to tell you is that when you are inheriting, the whole point of this lecture is that when you are inheriting an object, and they both have, uh, the, the base one has dynamic memory. And you are inheriting something for it. It doesn't matter if the child, if the child has dynamic memory or not. You have to make sure when the copying happens, you do the base copying if you are implementing anything. If you are not implementing, if, if the child doesn't have any dynamic memory, any resources, and you are not implementing the copy construction because you don't need it, then the copy constructor of the parent calls or it gets called automatically. You have no problem. But if you do have something in a child and you are doing the copy constructor or any type of constructor, then you have to implement everything. You have to make sure everything works and you have to take care of the parent's data. That's the arrive classes with the resource. Please go through this in detail and make sure you understand how it works. Okay? And the next time you're coming to class, uh, we're going to go through it. Okay? Also, <clears throat> all right, have a beautiful day, and uh, I'll see you next time.